uh, what I do at first is I make sure that um, the page is designed the way I want it to be, uh, the way I want it to look. Um, and now what I want to do is right now uh, the margins are set at three picas all the way around, and that's the default um, margins that you're not supposed to use for this project. And so um, the fun one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my left and my right margins are the same. Uh, so I am going to hold the shift key down and select all my three items right here and then go object and group or command G and then I'm going to go over to the align menu which I have to happen to have down here but if you can't find it it's under object and layout and align and right now I sometimes it comes up shows up like this uh, and you want to make sure you show options and so we have these distribute options down here as well um, and we can align things to different things. Uh, we can align things to a selection, align one selection to another selection. You can align to margins, align to page, or align to spread. And so I have set align to page so that when I center this content on the page, I will know that we've got equal margins on the left and on the right. Now right now it seems a little high on the page because there's a lot of space down here. And so we could center it this way as well, but um, visually uh, things tend to feel a little heavy at the bottom if you align them equally. So I'm just going to bring it up a couple arrows on my keyboard and so this is going to be my final space, um, spacing inside the page and now I'm going to adjust the margins so I know what the margins are and what I do is I usually come over here and I grab a rectangle tool and I make drag the rectangle from the edge of the page to the type, that box. And then up here it says 4P10. So I can highlight this and copy it, Command C, and then go up to Layout, Margins and Columns. And right now I have this checked off, so this link is broken so that I can have um, the inside and the outside of my margins the same width and it won't adjust the top and bottom. So if I click OK, now that inside and outside it should say left and right. So I'm going to go to my file document setup and change, turn off facing pages. So when we have facing pages you have inside margins and outside margins because you have a left and right page. Uh, but because we only have one page we can turn off facing pages and then we can go back up to layout margins and columns. Now you can see now it's left and right. So now I need to figure out the height, the top margin. So I'm going to go to the edge of the page and then go down to the visible type, which is right there. And then the height is 5P. So I'm going to copy that. Layout margins and columns. So the top is now 5P. Click OK. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and Make sure I'm touching that that type right there, and to the edge of the page, and so it's close to 4p11. So layout margins and columns 4p11. Let's just make it 5p. So there's something wrong. Oh, I, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, I'm looking at the height. So it's 6P2. Layout margins and columns. 6P2. I knew something was wrong because it wasn't touching the type. All right, so now my margins are touching the type. Uh, everything's cool. Um, now the last thing I want to do is I want to have hyperlinks to my email, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter. And so how to do that is to, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and highlight this. And if you don't have hyperlinks available over here, it would be window, interactive, and hyperlinks. 
So I'm going to come over here to my hyperlinks and I already have other hyperlinks already created for these link to issue items. And I'm going to create a new one for email. So I bring this up and notice that it does HTTP colons. So it's like looking at it as if it were a website. That's because we have link to URL up here. And when we want to do it, what we want to do is make it to link to an email. So now we have my actual email address and you can even create a subject line that says Give me a job, or anything like that. Uh, I'm not going to put anything right there. And then click OK. All right, so now this pink means that there's type that is missing here. And so I'm going to go through the other ones and kind of show you what's going on here. Uh, so my, my LinkedIn, uh, i just put my name here. Or you could put your whole URL there. So if I go to the internet and I happen to have my page up, I want to make sure that I'm viewing the profile. So there is my specific URL that I've changed to Prof. Darren Sinevsky. So I'm going to copy that then go back to InDesign and then highlight this and I'm going to make a new now this time it's a URL so I'm going to change that and I'm going to paste this in now you have to make sure that you have your HTTPS colon slash slash all here and we have hyperlink and so it says character style hyperlink remember that click OK and now it has that and now Twitter is my Twitter handle is dsnevsky so let's go back to this So here is my page. I'm going to copy that. Go back to InDesign and highlight this new URL. Paste that. Hyperlink. OK. Now sometimes you see this little red dot here and that means that it's not working. So we just got to make sure that um, this, uh, this LinkedIn button works after the fact. Now notice that everything I have is branded red, uh, but these hyperlinks come in blue. And that is because, let's go to here, go to character styles. The InDesign document has a hyperlink character style already. So, basic characters, I want to make sure that it's the same as everything else. All right, so there's that. Let's just make sure I got that. Now, if this doesn't happen for you, that's fine. But I just wanted to show you something. That pink type, uh, pink means that a typeface is missing uh, and that it's just looking for something to replace it with. So notice that all this is, <coughs> is uh, the default hyperlink blue. And I want to change that hyperlink blue to this red color that I have on the rest of my um, resume so I'm gonna go to hyperlink double click on it oh, well click too far let's cl click over here double click on it there you go 
and then we want to go to character color and instead of blue I want red I want the red that I'm using in my branded color for this particular resume so click OK and now you can see that all of the items are now the same color so I've got this branded black and red color thing going on all right so now that we have this we have created our hyperlinks for email LinkedIn I did it for Twitter I have it for these other things anytime that you have a, a reference to a website you should make it um, interactive so now what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a interactive PDF so I was taking this class now before I do this I'm gonna um, package this file and package and notice that there's no red dots down here where it says no errors so that's good so everything's good and I'm going to package it and package it okay and the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to file and uh, export a PDF into that package file because what it has done is it has created A PDF here but it's not an interactive PDF if I come in open it up um, and notice that I can't click on anything and nothing happens so you want to create an interactive PDF so close this down and so now we're going to go file export instead of print PDF PDF down here we're going to go to Adobe PDF Interactive and I'm going to go into my folder that I just created I'm going to overwrite this one or I can change it to interactive so you have a print one and you have an interactive one um, and hit save now under compressions I like to have my compression resolution to a little bit bigger than 72 or 96 144 is good uh, so let's hit export and now this pops up <coughs> now you need to test these things to make sure that they work so if I click on this it brings up my mail so that's good If I click on this it brings up My LinkedIn so that's good and if I click on this it brings up my Twitter all right so it's all good to go and now I have it in my folder here it is so I have my package folder with my print PDF and my interactive PDF uh, and now I want to zip this and I want to upload a zipped package file so I'm gonna right click on this and hit compress and there now I'm gonna upload this file not the folder and now we're good to go great thanks